Hey, this is Ghost Dad for Pro Audio Star, and I just did a routine using the DJ C4. It's a new controller from Stanton. It's great for a DJ who's just starting out, or maybe a more advanced DJ who wants a portable all-in-one solution. This has the sound card built right in, so it's everything you need to get DJing right out of the box. It even comes with its own custom version of Virtual DJ 7 LE that's custom mapped to every MIDI control and even has its own custom skin, so you can see right on the screen all the controls you're grabbing a hold of. Let's take a look at the layout of the mixer. Starting at the top of our decks, we have two rotary continuous encoders. These also push in as buttons. On the left, this is what actually activates your loop and lets you set your loop length. Next to that is a way of dialing in effects on your different effects decks in Virtual DJ. And to the right of that are three more encoders that let you control your effects. Buttons to turn on and off our effects are below that, along with loop length buttons above our pitch slider right here. We also have a whole looping section that lets you set your in and out, as well as turn on and delete loops right below that. Below that is our hot cues. You can set up to four and underneath that is our sampler that lets you send off samples right from the face of the mixer. Under that you're able to do enable key lock and beat lock as well as select your different decks. This controller lets you grab control of four decks in Virtual DJ but you can control one deck at a time so this is how you toggle between them. A sync button to the right of that to get your tracks synced up and a button that enables scratch mode. The jog wheel feels pretty solid. It's actually one of the more solid ones I've felt on a uh, controller that's this small. It doesn't have too much travel and it doesn't seem to wobble back and forth at all. If you grab it at the top, you'll be engaging scratch mode when scratch is enabled, so it'll actually sense your touch here at the top. And when you touch the side, you're able to nudge the track, very similar to some other controllers. A shift key down here gives some of these buttons up top different functions. Uh, and below that we have our transport controls, Q, play, and a button for tap tempo, which is an easy way to set your BPM in Virtual DJ. Looking at the mixer section here in the middle, we have control of our master volume as well as switches for our different inputs. This controller has two phono line switchable inputs as well as an auxiliary input via eighth inch if you want to run something like an iPod or an external mixer through this as well. And you have a microphone input on the front as well and that's all switchable up here. Under that is our gain that controls our gain in our software uh, as well as the volume of our sampler for those sampler tracks. We've got a nice big continuous encoder here in the middle that lets you search through your library and you can use that as a button as well to get in and out of levels of your library. Buttons to load your tracks into the different sides here and another continuous controller underneath here that lets you uh, select through different effects and functions of your controls. You also have an EQ section here which are traditional EQ knobs, but the nice thing about these is they pu punch in as buttons as well. So you can actually use these as kill switches, which is kind of a nice feature um, to kill different bands based treble high when you're mixing. Faders below here, they feel pretty nice, have like a little bit of resistance to them. And a crossfader here in the middle, which is uh, very responsive, it worked great in Virtual DJ. A cool thing about it is it's completely replaceable. You see these screws here on the sides, means that it's replaceable, possibly upgradable down the road if you wanna get a better crossfader. And that's a nice touch as well. At the bottom below the jog wheel is our transport controls. You've got Q and play, as well as a tap tempo button. This lets you set tap tempo easily in Virtual DJ, but if you're mapping it in Virtual DJ Pro or Tractor, I'm sure you could map that to a different control as well, maybe a Q play feature or something else you might want to use. On the sides of our crossfader are two toggles. They enable crossfader link mode and smart fade mode. These are uh, two functions in Virtual DJ that actually change the function of your crossfader and tie it to a video set if that's what you're playing. Uh, but I'm sure you could map those as well if you're using Virtual DJ Pro or Tractor to toggle different functions. We've got pitch slider on the deck as well, along with a pitch bend button. So if you don't want to use the slider or nudge, you can use actually a button to get your tracks lined up if they're not perfectly in time. A unique feature of the C4 is fader effects control. When enabled, it actually changes the function of your volume fader to control the effects that you have enabled in your effects deck. Looking at the front of the DJ C4, we have a quarter inch input for our mic along with mic level and on off switch and control of touch sensitivity of those jog wheels at the top. This is gonna control how sensitive they are to your touch when you're engaging scratch mode. You set that right here as well. Crossfader curve is set here on the front as well if you want a tight scratching crossfader or a smoother transitional one. And controls for our headphone mix, you can hear either the cue or the master here along with our headphone level. An eighth inch and a quarter inch out for your headphones are found here as well.
Back at the DJ C4, our USB port is right here. The C4 is bus powered, so you can plug it right into your computer and turn it on, which is really convenient. Our power switch is here, and you can still bus it off a six volt adapter if you want peace of mind that you're powered at all times. We've got master out, both balanced and unbalanced, so you've got your quarter and RCA, depending on what you have uh, at the venue or at home. Here are our two RCA inputs, which are switchable phono line. That's great if you want to integrate CDJs or turntables into your setup. Uh, and we also uh, can switch the input one from PC to throughput. This takes our analog input one and passes it straight through to the master um, so you're not sending it through your software. That's convenient if you've got maybe a whole other rig you want to run through this or just a signal you want to run dry straight to the master. Uh, an aux input is to the right of that so you can run an eighth inch in. Maybe if you've got that iPod or some sort of backup audio system, uh, really convenient input right there. And our gain for that input is set on the back here as well. I'll go through some of the controls I took advantage of when I was working out a short routine on the DJC4. Looping was definitely one of them. It was really easy to get in and out of loops with this looping section uh, and um, just turn them on and off. It remembered what I had my loop length set to. So when I had a beat playing, as soon as I hit loop on, it got me into that loop. Hitting the delete button will get me right out of that loop uh, and forget about it right away, but it's always there, so it's kind of easy to take advantage of, which is nice. Uh, the effects were another thing I used. I was able to uh, choose the effect I wanted to be on. Um, I used the beat grid a lot. The other thing about this version of Virtual DJ is it gives you three effects decks in a row, which is nice. You can actually combine effects. I think I was combining a doubler and a flanger as well as a beat grid, which is a, a really cool effect. So if I call up the doubler, flip and double effect here. Um, So there's the beat grid, which does that really cool uh, beat grid effect, which I think Virtual DJ does pretty well. And then flip and double is another way of like kind of creating a doubles effect, like kind of old hip hop DJs used to do. Um, or doubler is kind of an effect that hip hop DJs would use, uh, kind of setting one record off in time so that it, you could create a double phasing effect between the two songs, but you can do that actually right here on the effect. So I was chopping up beats on the fly in that routine a little bit using those two effects as well. I was also trying to mix on three, sometimes four decks at once. So switching between the decks I found really easy. And the way that uh, the song you have queued into that deck actually uh, pops up uh, at the top of the software was really convenient for kind of keeping track on uh, which deck I was kind of looking at at the time. Loading songs into the decks was easy. I was able to use grab this big knob here in the middle, find the song I wanted, load it up. Uh, when you select between your decks, Virtual DJ actually switches the position of those songs on the face of the software, so I was able to sort of glance over and see which song I was taking control of. I also used the sync feature, which let me automatically sync songs. This just gave me more time to play around with the beat matching, the looping, the effects. I was also using the EQ knobs, uh, but not in the traditional sense. I really like that when you push them in, they create a, a kill switch. So with my track playing, I was able, able to uh, easily take out the bass with the touch of a button, which was nice. Q and play were great. They're pretty precise. So I can like drum in a song if I wanted to. Once I hit Q, I can then toggle play and it'll keep playing and hit Q to get back to that point. I've also got those hot cues available, so that's pretty cool. I didn't really take full advantage of the sampler in Virtual DJ in my set. Uh, I think it's a cool feature that maybe a lot of people don't know about. Uh, I've got just the default samples loaded in there right now, stuff like an air horn, kind of an air raid siren. When you open up Virtual DJ for the first time, it actually has samples already loaded in for you, but you can always replace them with your own and sync those to uh, your tracks, which is kind of a cool feature. You've got sort of a fake uh, saxo beat in there along with a bunch of others, but you can of course load in your own samples, sync them to your tracks, uh, maybe do one shots, beats, whatever you wanna do, and you can control that right from the face of the C4 as well. The jog wheels on the C4 uh, work pretty well. Like I said before, they're not too wobbly, not too much travel, they kinda have a nice amount of resistance, and uh, the touch sensitivity lets you kinda do some basic scratches. Um, Paired up with your crossfader, you could kind of do some uh, basic cuts. The crossfader is really responsive. Uh, you can be as detailed as you want with that. Uh, and it also is convenient for kind of like, you know, getting to parts of your track if you need to do that quickly and you're used to maybe using a CDJ or a turntable and rewinding manually.